Hello, theory students. Today we're going to be learning about using 6-4 chords to expand harmonic areas. We'll split this up into two parts, and this videocast will cover part one. There are four kinds of 6-4 chords. Cadential 6-4 chords, neighboring or pedal 6-4 chords, arpeggiating 6-4 chords, or passing 6-4 chords. Today, we'll be covering these two in part one. These are inherently unstable chords because of the dissonant fourth that's formed with the bass. And therefore, these chords can't be arrival chords, but rather they have to resolve someplace else. That's why they're useful mostly to expand areas rather than to be important chords by themselves. The cadential 6-4 expands the dominant at the cadence. So if we think about our structure of a phrase having tonic, predominant, dominant, and tonic, it's this part of the phrase, the dominant area, that could have the cadential 6-4. The 6-4 chord happens on a strong beat. It could be a downbeat, or it could be beat 3 of a 4-4 measure. The resolution is on the weaker beat. We always double the bass on every 6-4 chord. And the intervals that are a sixth and a fourth above the bass will go down by step. And when they do that, we'll get notes that are a fifth and a third above the bass. Let me show you how this works with an example in F major. Here we are in F. And imagine that we have a line that ends this way. to a perfect authentic cadence in the key of F. Previously, we could only put the five chord here on the second quarter note before going to the one. Now with the cadential 6-4, we can actually make this entire measure Five, and we can do it this way. Imagine that we're coming from a 2-6. And now, we have scale degree 5. The 6 and 4 above the bass will go there, and we will see it resolving to a 5th and a 3rd above the bass. Let's fill this in, and let's see how it works. Here's the 2-6. And now let's see, what's a 6 and a 4th above C in the bass? A sixth above the bass is A. We've already got that in the soprano. A fourth above the bass is F. That's going to come from the alto. Double the bass. So the tenor gets a C also. What happens now? The sixth and the fourth above the bass. Here's the sixth above the bass. Here's the fourth above the bass. Go down by step. The sixth above the bass goes to a fifth above C. The fourth above the bass, F, goes down by step. 
to a third above the base. What happens with the tenor? The tenor can stay on the C. If I wanted a 5-7, it might even go down to B-flat, but let's do the simple version first. What happens now when we resolve this? We fill that out, and we get a complete cadence. Here's what it sounds like. It's important to note that the 6-4 happens on the downbeat, the strong beat. The resolution 5-3 happens on the second beat, the weaker beat of the measure. That's the feature of the cadential 6-4. Now here's an interesting thing about this 6-4. If you look at what notes are in this, We've got scale degree 5, scale degree 3 we already noted, and scale degree 1. So with the notes 1, 3, and 5, it has the notes of the tonic triad, and this leads us to an interesting question. So is it a 5 chord with a 6-4 to 5-3 motion over the bass, or is it a 1-6-4 going to a 5? Theorists have disagreed about how to notate the cadential 6-4 chord. The argument for the 5 with 6-4 going to 5-3, the 5 chord arrives when scale degree 5 is in the bass, and the upper voices take a beat or so to get to the rest of the 5 chord, like a suspension or like accented passing tones. Using that logic, the 5 chord arrives here on the downbeat when the bass gets to scale degree 5, and the A and the F are just accented passing tones on the way down to E and G, the notes of the 5 chord. That covers that explanation. The argument for the 1-6-4 to 5, as I showed you before, the actual notes of the 6-4 chord, when they're arranged as a triad, form a stack of thirds that are built on scale degree 1, the tonic. Our textbook uses a 5-6-4 to 5-3 to notate this chord, but I'll accept either notation. Be able to understand it both ways. It's the same device, just two ways to notate it. The neighboring or pedal 6-4 chord can expand any area of the phrase, the tonic area, the predominant area, or the dominant area. The bass either sustains or it's repeated while the upper voices of the triad go up a step and then back down a step. In other words, we go from 5-3 above a bass, the bass doesn't change, the upper voices now go to 6-4 above the bass, and then they come back down to 5-3 above the bass. All the while, the bass does not go to a new note. Let's see how this will work. Let's say we're in D major. Let me put a whole note D in the bass, and I'll put a whole note D in the tenor as well. The other notes of a one chord are F sharp and A. Now imagine that the F sharp and A start out a fifth and a third above the bass, they each go up by step, 
and now momentarily they are a sixth and a fourth above D, the base, and then they go back down to a fifth and a third above the base. Here's what it sounds like. You can see here that each of the parts, alto and soprano, sound like neighbor notes. That's why we call it a neighboring 6-4. Or the other way to look at it is the D in the bass doesn't move at all. It forms a pedal point or a pedal tone while the other parts move above it. In either case, this is one way to notate it, where we just put the Roman numeral down of the original chord and let the figures show us how the upper voices are moving, all the while expanding the tonic area. The other way to look at it is that while the 6-4 chord is being sounded, here's a G, here's a B, and here are Ds. GBD is a four chord in this key, so it might be possible to notate it this way. Where we go from a one to a four, six, four to a one. As before, we double the bass on the 6-4. And usually the 6-4 is on a weaker beat than the chord that it's expanding. Every once in a while the 6-4 will be on a stronger beat in the same way that we could have a neighbor note that's accented. But typically this is the way it works. As I mentioned, like the cadential 6-4, the neighboring 6-4 can be either written this way or it can be written this way. The first way describes the upper voice embellishments and the second describes the triad that happens when the 6-4 arrives. This can happen over a 1 chord, it can happen over a 4 chord, it can happen over a 5 chord. In class, we'll go over the different ways that can work out. This is part one of the 6-4 chords. Stay tuned for part two.